Father, cleanse these filthy hands. I long for brokenness for all my sin and shame. The tears you wept down numbers. Most the leaven of the Pharisees, though, it stands for a, a principle, hypocrisy. Jesus Christ warned to not to be careful with the leaven. You ever bake? I don't know, baker, but you have to put leaven so the bread rises. If you don't have leaven, it's going to be like matzo, you know, like like crackers, right? Like Passover. So Jesus Christ said, "Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. 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 Hypocrisia. Hypocrisy." Hypocrisy is I say to do this, but I or don't do this, and I do that. I'm a hypocrite. Now. Hypocrisy is do this, and I don't do it. I'm he a hypocrite. They beware assholes that think they know when the end's coming because they're the idiots. God bless you, sir. So hypocrisy would be me not loving my neighbor. If I didn't love you guys, trust me, I wouldn't take the time out of being away from my family on Thanksgiving to be out here warning most of you, including this gentleman right here. You know, he speaks this way because his heart is dark. It said out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You know, Jeremiah 17 says, the heart is above all things deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can comprehend it? I, the Lord, I try the reins. I try the hearts of men to see if any seek me. Are you seeking the Lord? Do you fear him? Fear the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. So guess what? If you don't fear God, be honest with yourself. Say, oh yeah, I don't fear God. I don't fear God. That used to be me. I was a fool. I was a fool. You've chosen the way of the fool. Watch your step now. Watch your step. God doesn't want you to choose the foolish path because there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end of that way is death. Jesus Christ said, all those who hate me love death. Don't love death. Love Jesus. He is life. He is the God of living. God bless you. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, not the God of the dead. He's the God of the living. How about you? Are you alive in Christ? If you're not born again, you're dead. You're dead in your trespasses. Your sin will find you out. Fools make a mock of sin. You will be judged by God. The law is still guilty, not washed by the blood of the Lamb. Now you've been washed, cleansed, purified, sanctified, justified by our Lord Jesus Christ and the Spirit of our God. Unless you have. It's going to be a sad day for you on God's judgment. It is. It doesn't have to be. Don't look defeated. You should say, thank God I can repent today. Thank God I can choose Jesus today. I choose Jesus today. I have decided to follow Jesus. Follow he, he says. Not sit on your butt. I follow Miller White today. I know, sir. Woo! And God can free you from Miller Light worship. Okay. I used to drink alcohol. I come from a long line of alcoholics. A championship alcoholics. Yes. God freed me from alcohol, all addiction. Sin is an addiction. You know, maybe it's not alcohol, maybe it's gaming. Uh, maybe you're addicted to gaming. You know, those people that play out. I, I, I have a brother that he, he played gaming so much, he wore diapers. I mean, that's pretty bad. How about you guys? How about you guys? He can free you from cowboy addiction, football addiction, any addiction. Oh, yeah, that hit a soft spot, I know, for some of you. We don't want to let go of our idols, right? We're like, you ever you see a three-year-old like in a toy store and he, and he grabs a toy and he takes it out and says, ah, 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 give me my toy. He throws a tantrum, right? Well, that's what we do with our idols. Our idols, we don't want to let it go. Trust me, I don't want to let go of jujitsu. Oh, I love jujitsu, let me tell you. I loved it. It gives you so much power. Oh, yes, I shouldn't have been able to do what I was doing at a, as a middle-aged man. It's a much powerful football players. We had football players coming to the academy. And they're tapping out to this five foot seven old man. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's power. I had to give it up. Oh, I didn't want to give it up. I didn't want to give it up. Oh, no, Jesus. I believe in you. I I'll follow you to this point, but oh, I don't make me give that idol up. Don't make me give it up, Jesus. You know what he did? He almost killed me. He almost let me die. Yes, sir. I believe in Jesus, too. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. You got to follow him, though. The devils believe too. And no devil's gonna be enough. Don't don't be a devil level. Oh, you gotta be a saint level. The saints follow him. It says that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Holy Spirit is gonna be a witness, testify for you. 
and we love not our lives unto the death. Hallelujah. Revelation 12, 11. Are you overcoming? Or is sin overcoming you? Kick that devil out your life. Choose Jesus Christ. Repent of your sins. This is the starting point. If you haven't repented, uh, you ain't going to get to the grace of God. When you repent, it means it's an act of humility. It is an automatic. When you repent, you are acknowledging you're a sinner in need of God's grace. You're acknowledging. You say, I'm a sinner. You're done. You're done making excuses. Say, Lord, I'm done. Some people need that in a jail cell. Some people need that near-death experience. A lot of army brothers, they needed that when the bullets went flying. And a lot of people died. And they can't explain why they're still alive. A lot of them, they did, that wasn't even enough. That wasn't even enough. I'm telling you, there's an appointment. Today is the day of salvation, folks. You can get right with God today because Jesus, Jesus, because of Jesus, because of what he did at the cross for you. Jesus died and he rose again. Jesus died, he was dead. Dead is dead. Dead is dead for three days. And then he rose again. That resurrection power is available to you. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead abides in the new creature. God bless you. When you come to Christ truly submitted, you're baptized by the Holy Spirit. You're baptized into the death of Jesus. And you're going to rise to the newness of life. To the newness of life. Don't wait. Some people think, oh, I'll just wait till I die. That's too late. That's like saying, I'll wait to go to the Cowboys game like an hour after it's over. The game's over. There are no more game. If you guys came tonight at 11 o'clock, it's going to be empty. Nobody's here. Don't wait till you die. There's no purgatory. There's no redo. There's not going to be another games, uh, Cowboys versus Washington tonight because you just missed it. So we're here to give you the ticket, the true ticket to heaven. Jesus Christ, he is that ticket. It's free. You don't have to pay for it. How much are you guys paying for these tickets, by the way? How much are they? 400 Jeez. Louise. 400 bucks. <clears throat> That's a lot of money, folks. I mean, this stadium, I don't know if it's sold out. It's pretty packed today. Probably, I'm going to estimate about 80,000 people. I'm not sure it's 100,000 today. But think about 400 bucks is probably the low end for tickets here. I mean, think about how much, I'm not a math whiz, uh, but how much is that? $400. And, and I, know, I know some of these tickets are going for probably three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000. But $400, $400, dollars $400 a ticket times 80,000. This is just ticket sales. That's $32 million. You get that right? 400 times 80,000. 32 million. Come on. $32 million. If there's, if not even 100%, not even the full capacity today, not even the full price of a ticket. Do you guys know how much this game is making? For the, for, for, for the establishment, the corporations that, you know how much it's making? $32 million today. Folks, we're warned. We're warned that in the, in the latter times, there's going to be false teachers. False teachers. This is a teaching. They're teaching you rules. They're teaching you standards. In the games, they have referees. They have rules. they got to play by playbooks. They're teaching you something that does not lead you to salvation. It leads you away, potentially, from salvation. God wants that none should perish. Jesus Christ doesn't want you to perish. He doesn't. $32 million. That's how much they're making. At least. And there's probably more, because that's just ticket sales. That doesn't include all the other commercial uh, endeavors that this is connected to. With uh, marketing and TV and sponsorships. I mean, we're probably talking $320 million, not just 32. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul in hell? What will a man recompense? What will a man pay for his soul? We can't pay anything. Jesus Christ paid for it all on the cross when he shed his blood, his perfect, spotless, holy blood for us. Praise God. I'm going to switch up.
Praise God. Praise God, everyone. God bless. This is Thanksgiving, a day set, a God, set aside to praise God, to give thanks to God. It's in the name Thanksgiving. That's why Abraham Lincoln set it aside on the last Thursday of November back in 1863. The question for you today is, do you thank God? Do you praise him? Do you praise him on this holiday? Do you praise his name? That's why the holiday was set up. In First Chronicles, in the 16th chapter, it also talks about giving thanks to God. We see this throughout. We see this in Psalms. We see this in the 16th chapter. In the 8th verse, it says, Give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Do you give thanks to the Lord? Do you call upon his name? Do you share his deeds among the people? Do you share the gospel with your brothers and sisters, with your community, so that they can receive the light? Or are you distracted with other things in the world? For the message throughout the Bible is to give thanks to God again and again for the many blessings that we have received. Earlier today, I talked about the parable, or excuse me, not the parable, the story of the ten lepers, where the nine Israelite lepers couldn't be bothered to give thanks to Christ, but the Samaritan leper could. I'm hoping that you are like the Samaritan leper, and that you have time to give thanks to God for the many blessings in your life. The Bible also talks why some people choose not to give thanks to God. We see this in the Apostle Paul's words. In his letter in Romans, the 21st verse where it reads in the first chapter, it says, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not. God bless you. As God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. I can't talk with you now, so I'm preaching. I'm not going to talk with you. I'm not going to talk with you. Okay, how you know? I'm not going to talk with you. God bless you. So could you. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore good also gave them over to uncleanliness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than creator who is blessed forever. What do you want to say, sir? I'm not here to serve you. I'm here to serve God. I'm upset because you're disturbing the gospel message. This is God's earth, not your earth. This is God's earth. You need to humble to God. No, I ain't humble to you. I said to God. I know that. motherfucker. All right, you God ain't about you. to help nobody. God bless you. You ain't about to help nobody. I'm not here to but serve you. But you talking shit. I'm not here to serve you. Ain't you. Gonna I'm help here to nobody. serve God. There you go. No, they ain't going to help yeah. me. They ain't going to help me. Yeah. This is what I'm saying. Just keep preaching. Don't Just listen to me. That's all I want you to do. And I do all that for you to listen to me. That was stupid. You want to see somebody? You say, put your trust in God, right? Mm -hmm. I do it every time I come out here with a fucking bucket and a dog. Okay. And then everybody come in front of me and scream and holler. Don't put shit in the bucket. I'm good, bro. Don't put nothing in the bucket. Don't have, I'm trying to get it ruled. Nah, bro. I'm not being real. You can have that back. I appreciate no, you, you though. Okay. You, have, you said, put your trust in God. Okay. Watch me. I ain't mad at you. Okay. I ain't mad. You can't get mad because I'm talking. I, you can't get mad. You can't get mad. Why you didn't go to the corner, bro? This is where we preach. No, nah, I, I, I can do what I want to. You met it. You met it. I'm glad I'm right here. So this is where we preach. Regularly. But you met it. Now you ain't been here for the last two, three Sundays. Or last two, three games. When now we come here, here, this is where we you preach. You ain't been right here, bro. Somebody lying there. Somebody lying there, bro. Because he said you can't go to the court. See? So somebody lying. Somebody lying. You don't be right here every week. I don't want that. I had to well, confront do you. Want the money or not? I had to confront you to, 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 for you okay. to say, it's up to you. for you to help somebody. What's that? I had to confront I'm you. I'm helping people for right you now. To help somebody. This money, these things will pass I ain't away. About all that. This life is irrelevant to the next life. 
That's what I'm saying. I had to confront you for you to help somebody. I'm Come helping on, people man. by spreading the no, gospel. I'm That's the greatest me. help I'm I can homeless. receive. I'm homeless. So, and but I gave I you money and yeah, you rejected it. I had to, I had to talk. I had to do, you talk. Want the, do you want the I money had, or not? I, I, don't, I got some money. I put my okay, trust well, in God and made money. Okay. I put my trust in God and made some money. Okay. Come on, man. They don't, they don't make me happy. I'm just being real with We're you, We're not going to be here next Sunday. I don't, I don't care okay. about all that, bro. Okay. This is what I'm saying. Okay. I'm trying to get the message across. Okay. I want to talk to somebody about God. Be real with them, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you what, 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 when your trust in God get. Bow. Okay. I got money. I don't okay. care about that, bro. So Put what's your the trust problem? in God, man. Okay. I do it every way. I right. do it every day. That's what we're doing do now, trying to day, share bro. the gospel message. I do this every day. Do you know what the gospel is, sir? Yeah, I know what it what is. What is the gospel? Come on, man. Don't worry about all that. What is the gospel? Do you know what it is? Yes. Do you know what it is? Who you have? I know it. I'm just, I'm just okay, saying. Everything good. I'm in, man. Everything good. I ain't fussing at you okay. like that. Right. God bless I'm you, fussing at you like that. Okay. I ain't fussing at you like that. Okay. I'm, 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 we want to fuss it. See how you... Okay. And if I, say, if I tell her to be quiet, thank you. You need to go home. She just wants the gospel to go Because you don't even know what we're talking about. She wants the you gospel. Just, you just try to be funny. Yeah. Okay, go over there. Go down there. Yeah. Go down there. Okay, I ain't got to. That's called the First Amendment. This is America. I ain't trying to be funny towards you or none of that. Okay. But everybody, you see this all the time. Don't nobody help nobody, though. Don't question. nobody help nobody, though. That's crazy, yeah. man. And if I understand your question was why are we here instead of over there, is that your question? That's basically it. Okay. So I, what, uh, I mean, because they, they, yeah. I'm like, man, why they ain't in the middle? The cops said turn that off. Everybody got, nah, man, that's your first amendment. You ain't got to turn nothing off. He, he told you to turn it off? Yeah, he did. What you do is record it and, and take his ass to court, because that's your first amendment, yeah. civil rights. Or we could just, just be peaceful. But, well, well, man. We can just be peaceful. Yeah, but being peaceful, cool. Yeah, they leave us alone here. They, they, I mean, but for real. Hey, you see, I ain't going down there. Are you going to pay my legal fees? You go pay them yourself. Come on, man. It's called pro bono. Quit act like you don't know, man. Yeah, I know more than you think I do. I even look good that group. I can. Ah, uh, you can do it yourself. You can use that pro bono, bro. What, what if you, you All right, ain't. sir. I'm being real I'm, I'm, with you. I'm giving, you giving me a lot of patience. Hey, you think I'm playing, man. I'm being real. Yeah, I know you are. I'm being real. Yeah, pro okay, bono. Let's, let's land the plane. Yes. In Walmart. Hey, but, but, but that's what I'm saying. I uh, mean, when y'all get done, everybody see what I'm doing. Because okay. they'll come. They'll, they'll come and they'll stand right by me. Y'all don't stand by me. Get in the middle. All the people coming that way. I don't know people coming. Now I like that. I like that. Okay. But I don't know people coming up here. Okay. They got to go. They on, they on the I'll, corner, bro. Okay. I'll, I'll pray on it. But I'm just being real with you, I'll pray on it. All people, That's the best I can offer you right now. You people coming, and yeah. then you try to offer me some money to shut up. Hey, y'all. That line, that line go You're asking for money. Go to, go to straight. Go to straight line, you didn't receive the money. Now, yeah, but you gave me the money to be quiet. Or leave no, you alone. I gave you the money because you asked yeah, for it. Nah, I think you're nah, sincere. I didn't ask you for no money. I didn't ask you for a dime. You me I just made the money. Yeah, but I'm just trying to, okay. you gotta get the message. You got to get the message. Watch this. See, ain't nothing wrong with that. We all have a message that we have to share. What's your name, sir? I'm Ed. Ed, my name's John. But, John, I'm gonna pray for you we, tonight, Ed. Hey, but I'm gonna get back to preaching here. That's why we're okay, here. You could. That Not here to glorify take, man. That line gonna take forever, y'all. Yep. That line That's gonna take forever. Yep. Go that why way. Why don't you go tell them first? Thing. But, but for real, yeah. you He's cool? I'm good to go. Yeah. I'm good to go. But, but I understand what I'm saying. Yeah. If you don't help nobody, you bashing your, you bashing this. This but, is the best help that we could possibly give to this anyone. Is what I'm Come on, all this is gonna I, pass away. We, are, we understand all this. Okay. Are you we sure? Understand. A lot of people don't understand that. Are you safe? A lot of people this don't believe. Are you safe? Because no one bothered to tell them. Are you safe? I believe in God, bro. Are you safe? Come on, man. Hey, no, but, but this what I'm saying. This what I'm saying. Are you safe? You bashing your, no, you, you bash your them in the city ticket sale. Are you safe? But you want them to, you want them to come. Where your church at? Are you safe? Are you safe? We're Are at the you? church. We're at the church. Oh, now you ain't. Now you're not. The church is four walls, right? Peace. 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 
Bible says in the book of Acts, in the 17th chapter, in the 30th verse, in the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Paul said these words in Athens, telling them about the unknown, unknown God they saw in the tomb, calling them to repentance. Every man everywhere is called to repentance. This word in the Greek is anthropos, meaning mankind. So all men, women, and children, we are to turn to God. We see this pattern repeated throughout the Bible. When they were in Lystra in the 14th chapter in the 16th verse, it says, who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. We are praising God's name today in the hopes that you will receive it in hopes that you will repent and change your ways and walk towards him. Walk towards his word, praise his name in public, share his deeds. My brother earlier today was giving his testimony for the changes that God worked in his life, ridding him of anger. He was dealing with some sexual abuse that happened as a child. He was able to chuck all that and now he serves God. Now he only has righteous anger in the hopes that others can receive the same gospel, they can receive the same healing, they can set aside the bitterness, they can set aside the anger, they can set aside the rage, they can set aside all these things that can disturb our continents and our countenance here in earth. Hey, I, I'm not mad at nobody. Right, God bless you. I'm just saying, though, y'all can go right there. Yeah. You can too, sir. I am. I'm going to go right okay. here, though. God bless you. And so many people after that decision to decide today, just like you decided to come to the game, you have to decide whether you're going to give thanks to God or whether you're going to reject him. Are you going to be grateful for the blessings in your life? Or are you going to prop up man ahead? Just as earlier today, I talked about the great golden statue that Nebuchadnezzar had created, where he wanted the glorification for himself. He wanted the glorification for the man-made things, rather giving the glorification to God. Or through the Bible, because we're made in the image of God, God is to change us, to take our hearts of stone and to give us hearts of flesh, to rid ourselves of all the wicked things in the world and rather to serve Him. Serve Him in love, serve Him in praise, serve Him in thanks. That is what we are called to do as Christians. That is what we are called to do as believers is to give thanks to God. Do you give thanks to God? Do you give thanks to God on this day of all days, the holiday set to give thanks to the Almighty? Or do you continue in your own ways having little time for God? We are here to call you back. We're here to call you to repentance. We're here to call you away from distractions. There are many distractions in the world where people try to blot out the gospel message, be ruled by other things in service to God, and it shows in their fruit. It shows in their reaction that they're more concerned about the things of this world rather than what happens next in an afterlife that is eternal. And when you give yourself away to these things, it corrupts your mind. It gives you a carnal mind and carnal thoughts. And it distracts you from the spiritual world. It distracts you from the spiritual realm. It distracts you from learning the will of God. And if you do that for too long, you will sear your heart where you no longer have time for Him. Even as a child, you might have had a soft heart. You might have a fleshly heart for Him. But if you give yourself away to the things in the world, what you can find is you corrupt your heart, you corrupt your mind, and as you get older, you found you have seared your heart and you no longer care for God. But the good news is this, even if you've lived your life that way in a moment in time, you can change. In a moment in time, you can humble yourself like the Philippian jailer in Acts 16, where you can realize that God's hands at work and humble down. God's hands at work even today, even now, even if you hear these words. We're calling out to you. We're here today to get you to think of God, even as it has been many days, many years since. 
Maybe if you've been mocked the message most of your life, we're calling out to you in love that today be the day that you let those words resonate. Much of my life I believed in God. I grew up in the Methodist church, but I had a very shallow faith. I lived in the world and it showed by the choices I made. It was only when I was humbled. It was only when I lost my business. It was only when it took away my idol, which was money, that I was open to God. For once, I did not put it out of my mind. For once, I said, I'll get to it when I'm older. I'll get to it when it, I'm good and ready. In that moment in time, I wanted to hear the gospel, and that is my wish for you, that today is the day that your ears are open. For the Bible says, those who have an ear, let them hear. That's available to each and every one of you out of every people, nations, kindreds, and tongues. The gospel message calls out to you. Christ's words call out to you even now. That is the power of God. The power of the God that created the heavens and the earth. The power of God that created each and every one of you. He calls out to you in love. That let today be the day that you receive his word. Today be the day that you repent. Today you go all in in serving God as you are called to do. And today of all days, give thanks to God. Praise his name. Jesus is king. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is the answer. Do not continue to go your own ways. Do not continue to walk in the ways of man. Man's ways are follies. The Bible says the foolishness of God is greater than the wisdom of man. So many men with their money and their power, they think that they are safe. They prop themselves up. They think that they are important. But the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, every man is going to stand before God for we're appointed one life and then the judgment. Each and every one of you will stand before God and you will have to make an account of every thought, every word, and every deed and action. And I say this to you out of love in the hopes that you will receive the message. For Christ offers you forgiveness. Christ offers you mercy. Christ offers you grace if you're willing to receive his word. Let today be the day that it sinks in. Let today be the day that you think, well, maybe there is a God. Maybe Christ did actually die on that cross. Maybe he did and was resurrected. And what does that mean for you? What does that mean if Christ's words really are true and that is the only way? In the Gospel of John, in the 14th chapter, Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. What if those words are true? What if he truly is the only way, the truth, and the life? What do you know about Christ? Do you live for him, or do you live for yourself? Do you worship men, or do you worship God? On this day of all days, do you worship God? Do you give thanks to him? Are you grateful for the blessings he's given you in his life? Here in America, we are, have so many blessings, so many wonderful things. Outside of giving the, the gift of life, we're also giving clean air, clean drinking water, wonderful food, where places in the world even today that's not available to them, and certainly in history, and that's available to you simply by being blessed that God gave you life. What does that mean for you to know that there's a God that loves you, there's a God that is patient and long-suffering with you, that there's a God that calls street preachers out there to preach his message, that God's provided his word for you in the Bible in the hopes that you will receive it? Do you give thanks to God, my brothers and sisters? Have you put God first in your life? Do you love him with all your heart? Are you ready for the judgment day that will eventually come? For if you're not, I'm calling you back to the narrow path. I'm calling you away from the broad road. Make sure you are in the right line and your mind is righteous. For that is what God calls you to do. Don't listen to your heart. The Bible says your heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? Make sure that you are living for Christ. For that is what he calls 
Christians to do. It's not about living your best life possible. It's about serving Christ. We are to deny ourselves daily, as it says in the Gospel of Luke, to pick up our cross and follow him. That means to die to ourselves and no longer live for the selfish ambitions, the selfish desires of the world. If you love God, you should follow God. If you love what he's done for you, the sacrifice on the cross, you should embrace that and you should live for him. This life is short enough. We're not promised tomorrow. We're not promised next week. You could die in a car accident tonight. This is a very serious message. Do not take this for granted. This is a blessing that you're receiving today, that you're receiving the gospel message. Because if you have not been saved, today could be your day of salvation. Today could be the day you receive eternal life. Today could be the day you receive forgiveness of sins. And so many of us have gotten ourselves dirty in the world, doing things that grieve God. Do you know that sin grieves God according to the Bible? Even as a child, when we did some of the basic things or we stole or we, we lied or did some of these things, our heart was more convicted then. But as we get older in the world, we develop, develop a habit, a hardening. We no longer see those as bad things. But God has a high holy standard. He calls out to you to change your ways, to repent. In the Greek word metanoia means to change your mind. To have new thoughts, to no longer live for the world, to no longer think that whether the Cowboys win the Super Bowl is the most important thing, but rather think, are my brothers and sisters saved? Is my family saved? How am I? Am I saved? Think on these things now. Redeem the time. The Bible says redeem the time for the days are evil. They are distracting if they're pulling you away from God. They're distracting if you have no time to think about the spiritual. They're distracting if you have no time to humble yourself and pray. Your purpose on this earth is to serve God. That's it. It's not to become famous. It's not to become rich. It's not to become a celebrity, it's to serve God. That is the greatest blessing that you could receive, is that you can look back at the end of your days and know that you served God, you loved Him, and you cared for your brothers and sisters. Because the gift you receive, the gift of God, is eternal life. To live in the afterlife with God for eternity. Not just the few years that we have on this earth, but for eternity. Even a child can realize that eternity is a long time. So be wise. Be wise not in your own eyes, but be wise to God's word. Hearken to it. As it says in the book of Acts, in the fifth chapter, the 29th verse, we ought to obey God rather than man. In this life, you will be tested, you will be challenged. You may have the faith to believe in a strong Christian, but then the world comes and you may be challenged. You may be challenged by a boyfriend or girlfriend that's trying to get you to slip into sexual immorality. You may be challenged by a boss trying to get you to do things that you know are wrong, defrauding some people, treating some people poorly. All the Christians call you to love your neighbor. You will be tested and you will be challenged. That's why it's important to remember the word. That's why it's important to read the Bible so you can be reminded. Reminded of the wisdom of God. Reminded of his knowledge. Reminded that this is simply a dress rehearsal for the next stage in life. Be wise, my brothers and sisters. Do not be ashamed of the gospel. For the Bible says those who are not ashamed of Christ in this life, they will not be put to shame in the next. Praise his name. Praise his name in public. Praise his name for the power it has. Share the good deeds that God has given you in his life. For this is the true day of thanksgiving. The Bible says in the Gospel of John, Jesus talking, he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. 
If you love God, you should be able to see it in the fruit of your work. You should see a changing in your heart in the way of your thoughts. You're no longer a slave to sin when you come to Christ. You become a slave to God. And God's slavery is a wonderful thing. That word has a lot of loaded power. But that word slavery to God, being a servant of God, is the best thing that you could do for your life. And all the men out here, the men who are running families, it's even more important for you because you have a control over your family. What they see, your wife, your children will have an influence on them. And by your choice to serve God, many of them will follow suit in return. Many examples of the Bible are just that, just like the Philippian jailer. When he decided to become saved, so did his household, and so can yours. And there is power in that. There's power in lifting up God. There's power in praising his name. When it had the influence in you, and by extension, your family, and ultimately, your community. Seek his word, my brothers and sisters. Seek his word now. Seek his word while you can. Do not put it off. The days are fleeting, and we are not promised tomorrow. This may be the last day you hear this message. This may be the last day that your heart is open to the message, and you have to decide whether you're going to lean into that or you're going to fall back into the world, fall back into the distractions, fall, be more concerned about what the score is the football game or what's that latest ping on my phone. And what's that girl ahead of me in the line think of me? If these are the things that are taking you away from God so easily, you're in big trouble. God is calling you to repentance. He's calling out to you in love, calling you with the hopes that this will be the day that you receive his word. Do not be the nine lepers, the Israelites that walked away without giving thanks. Be the one Samaritan who humbled himself and gave thanks to God and had his heart and his ears open to God. As the Bible says this, knock and the door will be open to you. Ask and you shall receive. If you ask for God to come into your life and your prayers are according to his will, he shall honor. That is the promise of the Bible. So seek the Lord, my brothers and sisters. Seek him while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. If you have a stirring on your heart, act on it. Act on it. Pray to God now. Pray to God tonight. Allow that thought to fester in your mind. Allow that seed to be planted. Be the fertile soil. It's mentioned in the parable of sower where you're going to allow God's seed, God's gospel to be planted into your life and you're going to water it. Even if it seems impossible to you that your life can change, even if it seems impossible to you right now, because you have all these issues, you have all this anxiety, you have all these fears, you have all these doubts, you have depression, you have suicidal thoughts, and all these things. Know this, God can start a work in your life. God can heal you. The Bible says, little by little, God can heal you. Believe that. Believe a God that created the heavens and earth. Believe that a God that created all of mankind can certainly work in you. The power of God has not stopped. The power of God is alive. For when Christ was risen, that's what it said, He is risen. Let Him lift you up, my brothers and sisters. Let Him lift you up. Let Him lift up your heart. Give your heart and mind to Him and be forever changed. And on this day, give thanks to God. On this day, praise His name. Praise God. Praise God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind and strength. For this is the day that the Lord has provided. God bless you all.